University uh, in uh, Ohio, and uh, you know, present some things to you today on uh, cricket. So I know um, at least two of you know cricket really well. <laughs> uh, I'm an, I'm Australian, so I grew up playing the game as a youngster. And these two guys over here from England, and uh, they did the same thing. So I've uh, got a, a few. Uh, folks here that have some knowledge of cricket, but um, what I'd like to do is uh, just give you the basic concepts today of the game, um, the basic rules, how you can adapt it for uh, kids of different ages, um, some uh, little lead-up games that uh, you could use uh, depending on the space requirements you have, some of the uh, tactical and the strategies that are similar between this game and some of the uh, building games, that striking games that you might play uh, as well, and some of the transfer opportunities between those uh, those different sports. So, um, going to get you up and uh, get you moving a little bit, and just kind of lead you uh, into the game with some um, with some uh, smaller games. Uh, so, if I could get uh, to start with, um, probably three of you up. Uh, so, you don't have a lot of space here. So, you know, if we were uh, doing, you. doing this, uh, you know, without <laughs> Our kids at school and such, um, I would have a number of these little games set up to start them out with when we were first introducing cricket. Uh, so I need someone to grab the bat there and someone to stand behind the, the three poles. Okay. And someone to stand about right here. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that skill. So what happens? 
doing the same, right? Well, that's also an out. Uh, so you're not out twice, but you... Uh, I'm out. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> so that would be another way to, to get uh, the batter out. In our game, though, uh, we're going to give you uh, several opportunities to get you need to have I didn't get it? Oh. Yeah. That's going to be hard. Ooh, I can't see it. Whoa! So, you caught the ball, right? Kids are going to ask you, well, if they catch a fly ball, what happens then? Let's all start up an out. So, in essence, uh, you've had two opportunities to hit, and you've been out three times. step through or does it stay down on the ground? He, it, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. And, and that, that would actually not be an out. Usually um, when you uh, you're on the right of the way, you can come in like this motion. He's just standing while he's bowling. Right. But in the game of cricket, we would take a runner. Nice. So, he's got a... Before that wicket, he can't run past that. I see. 
There's a uh, uh, international action. He's got to run you know, away. He's got to bowl before he does. I see. Yeah, yeah. What you in your PE class. <laughs> it's going to be that up when you have many games. The way that, that I did it was that uh, in, in physical education, we would teach the kids to uh, referee on five games. So there were actually two? Uh, I would have two. I'd probably have one person. Or I would allow the kids to cooper cooperatively referee their, their game. And you know, if we, we work on that effective area with the kids, then over time, that, okay. I, I believe they, they become yeah. fairer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So in that instance, the ball hit the wicket. Um, it didn't bounce, but that's OK. It's allowed to do that. It's allowed to do that. Very often, though, the ball, as you're doing quite nicely, bounces sort of in this area here prior to the back end. So um, the, the batter will usually be the uh, person to indicate when they're ready. Okay. And one way of doing that is that um, the batter actually doesn't hold the bat up like this. And so that's our next question. So the batter is actually going to be in the ready position with the bat down on the ground. Oh, and like golf. feet a little bit closer <laughs> together. Yeah. About like so. It looks more like a cricket. Our uh, golf position. We're going to move you in a little bit so that you're actually going to block the okay. wicket here. Move hmm. your feet in a little bit. I understand. This makes sense. Okay. Yep. So when she does that, that tells you that she's ready to play. Okay. When the bat isn't up or she's moved away, you, you should, that's uh, usually anything to wait. Yeah. So you don't have to make contact. Correct. 
in cricket, uh, you, you don't have to, but uh, you can stand there all day if she's a really bad bowler and the ball's going to the side, etc. there. You wouldn't have to hit it in a regulation game. Of course, we're going to modify that for the kids. So, so what would what would be the other offense be now? Would be what? what, what oh, that's a hit right now. So, what would you think would be the their their goal? Would be yeah. to hit. Okay, I say because we can play in 360 degrees. Okay. To to play it where maybe there weren't a lot of people. All right. Nice. So we actually play cricket on usually a large oval, and we have. Um, fair area, fair space, not only forwards and to the sides of the hitters, but also behind the hitters. So that is going to be the ball that way, that way, ah, anywhere they want to. There's no, there's no out of bounds no, I mean, cricket. The other, yeah. And the other question, you know, about, well, is this just a defensive game then? The kids will ask that, right? We're just, the bat is just hitting right now. I said the, the objective is not to have the uh, ball hit the, the stumps, the wicket. So, apart from that, what are the batters going to get to do? They're actually going to get to score runs, just like baseball. So, the way we score a run, and the next little piece of our game, is that once the one batter hits the ball, these two are going to decide whether or not they can switch ends and score a run. The objective is then to also, for our fielders, to get the ball back and hit the wicket before one of them gets there. Are we on the same team? Yeah. Yes. On the same team. Yeah, on the same team. Okay, so I, when you're, I don't want to hit. All right, so ball, I don't want to hit. If he hits the ball, I don't want to hit it back and hit it back. Yeah, we, we'll, right. we'll just play one out here. So uh, go ahead and bowl. All right, so take off. Sorry, sorry. Where I'm in it? the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh, oh, that was my fault. I couldn't move. Do you know? 
probably about, about three, three feet. Three feet. Yeah. Going out. Yep. Yep. So you've got about so three feet. Here. Like So the next little add-in, you know, the kids are working on. So you get here, all right, how can we advantage ourselves? We can reach with our bat. So our body's here, but our bat's here. So that's a little, little... Uh, do they slide like in baseball? Do they slide like in baseball? Um, I suppose they could, but it's not a particular advantage. Um, one of the reasons why that is, and if the kids ask that, then um, we had the ball under the chair over here. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was hard to get um, in our little game. So you all ran twice. So if you slide and you're on the ground and you want to go again, you've got to get up and run. So, and again, the bat is an extensive extension of the body, so it's not going to be much of an advantage to, to slide. Maybe this guy is faster and she doesn't make it into the zone. Uh -huh. 
So is each run one, is. two? Well, what if one makes it in the safety zone but the other one doesn't? The run counts when the bat is cross. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cross. Yeah. Yep, so sometimes what happens is actually yeah. that uh, the, the uh, two batters aren't particularly cooperative. Uh, they make poor decisions. And so one of them says, wait, and the other says, no, and they start running and both end up at the same end. When you have that, you've got two batters yeah. um, at one end, and one needs to get back in the safe zone. Uh, it's going to be pretty much an automatic out, uh, you know, if, if uh, one of them does not. Yeah. It's when they cross. It's when they cross, yeah. Yep. And all they have to do is get their bat past the three-foot line. Three line, and then they can take off the yep. bat. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Give something to pitch. <laughs> You, you actually would have made out because I caught the fly ball. Oh, wow. I was out for the week. So it didn't yes. matter. That's why he didn't run. Because yeah. he was already out. That's right. <laughs> yep. yep. So, all right, let's get another batter in. Another batter. Two. Sir? It can't be two outs. One out. You brought it. It's one, but. That, that is the end of the play. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I haven't looked at that rule for a while, but maybe you guys can help me here. If she doesn't swing at it, she can still go. 
Yeah, it's just a wire. Yeah, you, you, it's, it's her decision if she wants to go. If it, if she doesn't swing at it, then they get one. You get one run because of the wire. Because it's wide, yeah, yeah. But uh, and that's only if he misses it, right? If if the batter doesn't make an, an attempt to strike the ball, she just stands there and the ball goes wide without any attempt, and the, the umpire will call it a wide. And it depends how wide it goes. Sometimes if it's just a little bit, they won't call that. But if it's real wide, they will. There's an, a run added on to the score.
Australian relationship like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you don't want to tell the kids this, but uh, in international matches, you get some, uh, some tactics going on. You know, baseball, you have the D-balls. Cricket, you have body line balls. You get the fast bowler going in really fast, going at the, the batter. Oh, yeah, let's try to hit the batter. <laughs> and then sometimes that fast bowler will uh, bounce the ball instead of about, you know, on his feet and halfway down. And so by the time it gets to the batter, it's up near his head. So it will come in about there and bounce up. So we've got our tippity run game going here. If you hit it, you have to run. She says. Teamwork, teamwork. Oh no! Oh, she's safe. Yep, 
So uh, again, in a regulation game, uh, they would just keep going until one of them got out. That's why they have five days to play. In a 30 minute PE class, maybe uh, three balls, and then you rotate the batter, something like that. However you want to set it up oh, to make sure it's... Uh, well, that's really the reason why a game literally seems like when you go watch it, and then you come back three hours later, and it looks exactly the same <laughs> as it looked when I was there three hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apart from the, uh, the uh, state of the uh, spectators who have been having too many in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to tell the kids that either. No, probably leave that out. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so, how it, you know, in terms of modifications, like you would do in any other type of uh, activity with the kids, making it developmentally appropriate for them, uh, making sure that, um, you know, a fairly equal number of turns to hit um, with a key feel. Ball. Like I say, if I were doing this outside, which I normally would, this is the best way to do it, you have more space, then I might have, um, if I've got uh, you know, 30 kids in class, I might have uh, two batters, wicket keeper, bowler, two fielders perhaps at the most, and four or five of those little games going. Yeah. And so within 30 minutes, we've got tons of rotations around the, the, uh, the uh, positions there. Uh, lots of turns to, to hit, feel, practice the skills, that sort of thing. But uh, of course, I just show you very quickly some, some lead-ins to that. That I would start out by providing a simple little game of tossing the ball, protecting the wicket, and, and hitting um, the ball, which turns eventually into these questions to the game of cricket uh, by the end. So um, you know, your unit could have the little games in them, that sort of thing. What my kids have struggled with is putting the bat down the right uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. I, because we grow up with baseball. Yes. yes. You have to put the bat down. So yes. that's, that's what they struggle with. Oh, yeah. I learned very quickly when I was teaching elementary PE uh, to uh, get an appropriate position away <laughs> from the bats because those bats would fly. Yeah. 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 So that was one skill we had to, had to work on. Well, in the pitching piece, they would have to have a lot of time. So what I would do with that, well, it depends on how you, the process that you want to teach cricket. You know, I've taken the process that we created a little game to start with and added on to it until eventually we had the game. But we might stop that, those little games for a little while once we introduce the overrun concept, the Usain Bolt position. And in the gym, I used to have, when I did it in the gym, uh, we had um, just pieces of construction paper about the width of a wicket taped up there. We had them all the way down the gym. And so we had some bowling practice going on, let the kids try that. And then we went back to our game, added on to the, the uh, concepts and, and so on there. Uh, and so it, it is a good game for kids. It's, it's uh, interesting, it's different. But you've got the transfer property, some of which I've mentioned all the way through to other uh, striking fielding games that the kids are used to. Um, giving them lots of success with a, a wider bat, so for that um, they can be usually quite uh, successful. Uh, you have some similar concepts, um, such as protecting an area, like you might have in a strike zone in baseball, softball. Uh, you have the uh, concept of scoring a run, um, and you have the concept of placing the ball in the field where others are not order to try and score a run. And again, we have transfer properties there to other uh, activities that you can do. What did we do at the very beginning? Because I remember the first bat that came up, we yeah. held a light in the very back. Yeah. And then it wasn't until you started talking about it needing to be down here that we started doing a whole lot more of the protect. What was the very first thing that we did? The, it was the pitch. Yeah. It was a pitch over and pitch. We just trying to just yeah, I just let you hold the bat however you want. Yeah. Uh, they just pitched it underhand. Yeah. Uh, we had one concept of protecting just the wicket protect. and um, attempting to hit the wicket. Yeah. Simple concept to start with, yeah. simple little game. Yeah. Um, and so then as the kids ask questions, then we introduce the yeah. other skills as, as they go along. Like you all did, you, you were right. perfect, you know what I mean? <laughs> you asked the right questions, you know, what happens next? Well, if we do that, what happens? Well, here's what we do then, so we practice that. The problem would be, this would be just one game, and I couldn't be giving that same information to the field, right the fourth field over there, I guess, somehow, I don't know what I'm trying to ask or say, but, uh -huh. but you're one person. But, but, yeah, that's because, because we were doing it the way we were doing it, it's great because I was learning it, but I couldn't be teaching that in all the groups. And it depends how you want to do it. Um, you 
could do it in a, in a sort of a reverse order where you actually set up the game, you explain everything. But what I, I did was that I would have these little games. I would show the, have the kids together. Here's a little game we're going to play. We would demonstrate the underhand toss, the hip, the retrieval. I think everyone can do that. Yeah. Let's go over to yours and try that. Okay. All right. Someone asked a question. Maybe it's about the bowling. Um, so we'll bring everyone back in. And then we address that. Yeah. Question. Here's the question. And here's how you do it. Let's do a little practice. Go back. We'll have that piece in. Yeah. So they kind of they kind of guide. They do. The they do. Yeah. Yep. So it depends how you want to go about teaching it. A few different ways of, of, of doing that, different models of doing that. Um, Does it help for the kids to be able to um, perhaps see what a game would look like on YouTube or you know, pull up something where the kids could see what it, the end that's product what I, That's what like? I did, because I put, pulled up a little clip, just so they could get the idea of, wow, it's different, it's 360 degrees, it's oval, it's yeah. an area. Yeah, I, I did that. Certainly, you can, certainly you can it helps uh, answer some questions. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I've done it that way too. But uh, of course, you can just start out with younger kids just playing that simple little oh, game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as they develop a few skills with it and add on to it, hey, let me show you something. Yeah. This is what, how they play this game with some other skills. Take a look at this. Yeah. Well, what are they doing there? Well, let's add that in next. Yeah. You can do it that way too. Yeah. yeah. Little combinations there. Um, so I, I have a handout for you. It's got the basic rules on it. It's got some several lead up games that we didn't necessarily get to today. But uh, another one that uh, I think you would enjoy and the kids would like is um, if you want to just stand behind there for a minute. Um, I, I like this one more so for uh, fitness and just a little bit of batting practice. And, that's the thing. The ball can be underhand uh, or well attached. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the ball. As soon as I hit it, I'm just going to run to this disc and back. Yes. You're allowed to get the ball and you're going to come back to the marker there. Whether I'm back here or not, you can attempt to hit my wicket. Okay. Yeah? Right. Use the traditional pitch? Whatever you want to do. Right. Just to keep practicing there. So you've got to get it. Oh, he's got to get it. Okay. This might be a partner activity. Oh, Can't yeah. do that. Gotta go back there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can't do that. Gotta get this one. Right. This is just a little, little, uh, little bit of game that would have occurred earlier. Okay. <laughs> Continuous kick, click. Uh, continuous cricket? Is that the game? That one is continuous cricket. Yeah. Nice job. So, uh, more so for fitness, a little bit of batting. Um, if I really wanted to have better transfer on that one, I put the disc up here so I run vertically. Um, and of course, when I'm playing cricket, I'm not trying to get back and stop the ball. So that that transfer isn't there, but it's a really nice, nice little activity. We can play uh, three cricket, where I might hit the ball, if I get it past the bowler, I get one run, I don't have to run. If I hit it, 
into a different zone that's further down, two runs, another zone, three runs. If you play regular cricket, um, there's usually a boundary line around the oval. You hit it along the ground or it bounces over that line. It's an automatic four runs. You actually don't have to run them. And if you hit it over the line or over the fence without it bouncing, it's an automatic six runs. And again, I don't have to run. What is a typical run. game sport? Um, in the international matches, um, often in innings that might be averaging 250 to 300 runs each. Um, Opposite yeah. of soccer. Yeah. Individual batters, sort of most of them, their goal, they have great, great innings. They might be in there for hours. And if you can score 100 runs, it's usually mm -hmm. the deal. They keep track of those statistics. Yeah. How early do kids in England and Australia start learning this game? I mean, I know what it's like for children here to learn to start playing football yeah, or baseball right. or yeah. basketball. It's, is it's, this, uh, this is a game that kids start they do. They play it, play it uh, over there like you would learn football and yeah. baseball here. Um, you know, looking at uh, how we do it and how we do some of the sports here very early, not modifying it too much. I would say that you know we should, um, you know, with the younger kids, if we are beginning them that soon, that we take into account their the appropriateness of yeah. how we're doing it yeah. with the kids. For all the reasons you know about. <laughs> right. I'm sure they pick up ways realizing that you know the natural instinct is to is to hit the ball you know, back in that area too, but to try and position your bat and your body to do it in a funky. I think that is a lot of that skits a little more high. Yeah. Learning higher order learning skills. It is a it is a different uh, movement. A yeah. different motor skill. For I'm them. sure. Yeah. All this manipulation. I mean, I saw, you know, these guys there. Yeah. Uh, you know, just how they move the back yeah. differently and just edge, hit the edge. And it, yep. I'm sure that wasn't just by chance. And, and oftentimes when they hit it behind them, yeah, the ball will bounce uh, a little bit shorter than it might otherwise. So yeah. the ball bounces here, therefore it's starting to rise a little bit higher. To hit it this way, it's difficult. Yeah. What they will do is they will turn oh, and yeah. put the ball. Yeah. Or, in, in turn, cut the ball this direction. So it heads out that way. That's a whole other thing. Uh, we play mini games. There are 11 players on a team. We might have a wicket keeper right here. We might have someone in a position called first slip right here. Another person about here, second slip. Another person here, third slip. So that if I'm back and I'm left handed and I go to cut the ball, it take, goes off the edge of my bat here. Might go to any one of these people here. Someone's out here, someone's down there, someone's down there, someone's out here, here. All with uh, very specific um, position names that sound That slip kind of might move over here for right hand. Right hand better, they would move. And it's a nightmare for teams when you have a yeah. lefty and a righty. Yeah. Because they're moving switching, all the time. Yeah, switching it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So. Um, strategy there. Yeah. So, you know, in, in 45 minutes, that's cricket, and those are some of the little <laughs> progressions that you could use in, in developing that. Do you guys have anything you want to add on to? I think you've done a really good job of uh, explaining the rules through the game itself and how the game evolved through questions, and I think that's a really good approach to take because, uh, as Greg was saying, you do it different ways, but I think uh, from not knowing the game, I, I think that's just a, a really good visual way that, that students can be involved in asking questions, which we, is what we, we encourage students to do, but through playing the game. And that, that evolution of the game would be based on the questions they ask, bringing players in when you see something. I know somebody asked a question about, well, if I'm looking over here, working with this group over here, how do I, how do I address that? Well, if one group has a question, another group will have a question as well. That's where you can bring them in. And uh, I, I thought you explained that really, really well. Really well. Cricket balls are usually red in day games. Um, they're leather. They're about the hardness of the baseball. Uh, this is actually a rubber one, but it kind of looks like that. They have night games now too, and so they use the white cricket balls. Um, I uh, grew up when they really didn't, uh, showing my age here, didn't have <laughs> night games. Um, so I remember all cricket matches with, with the 
red. Is that uh, hard, real hard? Yeah, like a baseball. Like this one's baseball. just rubber. Okay. Like if you would pitch that and it hit me in the hip here, that thing would have hurt. You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be bruised up. Yeah. Um, they uh, they have the batters have pads on their legs up through about okay. here. They have padded gloves on their hands. Uh, these days they wear helmets with face shields. Um, do they have any pads? No, or not. I think some sometimes wear pads on them on their side if they're yeah. right with the bats up yeah. here, and then wear a shield down the forearm uh, yeah. to get on the arm. But not too much padding because of those restrictions running. Yeah. Yeah. Back back in the day, um, <laughs> they didn't have the helmets. They uh, didn't have the side pads. They had the, the leg pads and uh, the gloves, and that's about it. So, so in an international game, your your fast pitch. I mean, what kind of speeds are you looking at? Are they similar to major league yeah, baseball? They, they are. are. Yeah. The balls will fly down. Uh, you know, they'll skid after they hit the ground too. They will. Yeah. So over 100 miles an hour, right? For the fastest bowler, I think, yeah, for a really fast bowler. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the spin bowlers, you, you know, we right. were bowling at right. just the slower speeds there. Yeah, but they're professional athletes now. Yeah. 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 How often do they change bowlers? I mean, do they switch them out like they do in Major League Baseball? Yeah, every six balls, they, they, can, they switch. So if you pitch six, six down there, and you have a new person down here, that you could the same two can alternate all day. It's not hard to yeah, and he pulled, you're talking about between games, like would a pitcher, a pitcher wouldn't necessarily pitch consecutive games. Yeah, that's the okay. And the bowling sometimes they will go play in the same game. Okay. Yeah. They will take a rest after a pitch if that's mm. yeah, so baseball you've got that side pitcher might go seven innings. In cricket, you might bowl six, she might bowl six, and then the captain of the team says you two stick today. I'm gonna get him to ball next. Okay. So you can actually have a all players all if they were okay, you know, if they had the skill to do that. Okay. Usually not. About, they had usually about five or six. And once they pull you out of the baller, can you come back in later? You can. Okay. Yeah. So, but you can only do six at one time and then you have to switch. Correct, yeah. Yep. And it's called an over. So after six balls, that's an over. It doesn't it's not like Six, six balls, and six whether or not they were hit or not doesn't matter. Yep, the next person does six from the other end. With the kids, of course, um, you know, I might do two, two, or I might do two, 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 two that end. Just depends on, you know, how I've progressed the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything else, we want the kids to have uh, plenty of turns, no one waiting on playing a role in the game that everyone's getting plenty of possessions and so forth there. I think with those modifications that Gary's talking about where hit and run, those type of things, it turns around quickly. So yeah. everyone's going to bat, everyone's going to bowl. Yeah. It's, it's good fun. And this month, this game here gets them going and mm -hmm. it's a yeah. good workout. It's good. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank you.